If you suffer from hair loss and wish there was a way to reverse baldness so you could feel confident again, then this presentation is for you. Hair loss or alopecia affects more than 3.5 billion people worldwide. That's more than half of the world's population who are losing their hair. And despite this, the medical industry has come up with only two drug treatment options, both of which can have devastating side effects and it's questionable whether or not they even work. Can red light therapy, a powerful treatment with no side effects, restore hair growth on a balding scalp? In this presentation, you're going to learn the mainstream theory of hair loss, mainstream medical treatment options, and some horror stories of people whose lives have been ruined by them. Then you'll learn what actually causes hair loss and how red light therapy can help you restore hair growth. This presentation is massive. It goes over pretty much everything you could ever want to know about hair loss in addition to whether or not red light therapy can help you with hair loss. So if you want to skip ahead, I invite you to do that. Just check down in the description and I'll put some timestamps for you. Let's go. In the world right now, we've got billions and billions of people affected by hair loss. More than half of everybody alive right now suffers from hair loss. By the age 29, around 16% of men experience moderate to extensive hair loss. And by the age 49, that number increases to 53%. In women, by the age 40, serious hair loss is experienced by around 3 to 13% of the population. So those are the demographics of hair loss by sex. Those are your chances of suffering from hair loss if you don't already. Now we're going to go over the mainstream theory of hair loss. So the mainstream theory is this. Hair loss occurs when tiny hair follicles stop producing hair. Actually, that's not the mainstream theory. That's exactly what happens. The question is why? Mainstream medicine believes that the culprit behind hereditary hair loss in both men and women is the androgenic hormone DHT which is a metabolite of testosterone. If DHT is the cause of hair loss, then drugs aimed at blocking 5-alpha reductase, the enzyme which catalyzes the conversion of testosterone to DHT, is a logical treatment. And in fact, this is what the mainstream drug treatments do. But unfortunately, like most mainstream theories of disease, although highly profitable, this one is not based on science or common sense. A little fun fact here, a hair follicle is part of the skin which grows a hair by packing old cells together. So your hair is actually not alive, it's a collection of dead cells packed together by the hair follicle. So when the hair follicle stops working, that is when baldness occurs. Mainstream drug treatments for hair loss include drugs and surgery. The only two currently approved 5-alpha reductase inhibiting drugs are Rogaine, chemical name minoxidil, and Propecia, chemical name Finasteride. So Rogaine is a non-prescription medication for men and women. It comes as a liquid or a foam that is rubbed into the scalp daily. Propecia is a prescription drug given to men. It comes in pill form that is taken orally every day. Now we're going to look at the efficacy of these treatments. If hair loss drugs Propecia and Rogaine worked, we wouldn't have 3.5 billion people suffering from hair loss. Here's a quote from hair loss researcher Danny Roddy. I only have to venture to a major street in San Francisco to find that if there were an effective treatment for baldness, a majority of men are either not aware of it or are choosing to be bald. Another piece of evidence that suggests the mainstream got it wrong is that while testosterone production in the body peaks at an average age of 19 years, then decreases with age, hair loss is uncommon at age 19 and then increases with age. These are completely opposite and it's clear they have no correlation. Generally, the risk of losing your hair is proportional to your age, says hair expert Do Dr. Alan Bowman. Furthermore, we know that DHT isn't the problem because those with androgenic alopecia don't actually exhibit higher than normal levels of testosterone. The truth is, neither testosterone nor its metabolites like DHT are responsible for hair loss. And this is why mainstream drugs don't work. However, despite their lack of efficacy, they still have horrendous potential side effects. The most common side effects of 5-alpha reductase inhibitors include erectile dysfunction, ejaculation problems, and decreased libido in patients. And in some patients, these side effects are permanent. And I'll give you some horror stories on this shortly. Another option for treating hair loss is hair transplant surgery. Admittedly, this is not intended to fix the root cause of the problem, but, and I quote, to make the most of the hair you have left, according to the Mayo Clinic. 
This surgery involves the removal of patches of skin on the scalp where the hair is growing, on the side of the head usually, called plugs, which are then implanted one follicle at a time into the bald sections. Hair transplants come with a long list of side effects including itching, pain, bleeding, swelling, infections, and in the long term the transplanted hair follicles tend to fail just like the previous follicles. As mentioned, the three most common side effects of Propecia are decreased sex drive, semen count, and trouble with erections. Decreased sex drive, semen count, and trouble with erections have devastated the lives of so many men that a foundation called post Finasteride Syndrome Foundation was formed to help men cope. Dr. John Santman, post Finasteride Syndrome Foundation CEO, claims that of the more than 1,000 PFS patients who've contacted our foundation desperately seeking support, 12 felt that suicide was the only escape from the horrors of this condition and ultimately took their own lives. Now we're going to look at some horror stories, first from the perspective of a urologist who deals with men dealing with these horrendous side effects. Dr. Erwin Goldstein is a San Diego urologist known for helping alleviate the sometimes unpredictable side effects when men stop using Propecia. In a phone interview, Goldstein said he has more than 100 Propecia patients. For many of them, it's a nightmare situation, he said. It gets so emotional for me that I'm at a loss for words. But the real horror stories are ones of men suffering from post finasteride syndrome themselves. An Australian man who will call Martin was 22 when a doctor in Brisbane prescribed him Propecia for hair loss. I was extremely self-conscious, so I said fuck it and started taking Propecia, he explained. At the time, I was about to finish studying as a journalist and had lined up an internship with a sports team at the Australian. After taking the drug for three weeks, right before beginning his internship, Martin started to feel foggy and tired. He stopped taking the drugs, and at first the symptoms dissipated. Then after a week, I experienced what's known to post finasteride syndrome sufferers as the crash. Imagine your worst hangover, he says, combined with complete loss of sexual function, depression, and suicidal ideation for every single second of your life. I can only describe it as an unimaginable hell. Martin says he could barely get out of bed for the next nine months and constantly battled the urge to suicide. Then, after nine months, things improved to the point where I can now function on a base level, but life is absolutely terrible compared to what it was. Martin is now 27. He describes himself as a barely functioning human being and says he's tried hormone replacement as well as a range of various diets and exercise resumes. Today I hold down a job and get by, he says, but to be honest, life sucks. Next horror story. A Propecia victim from California named Mo started taking the drug in 2009 at age 26. I remember I was so conservative about the side effects and several times I asked the doctor if there were any side effects with this drug, but they said no, it's totally fine. Mo took the drug for 7 years. When he stopped, the side effects began. He suffered severe insomnia, panic attacks and muscle problems. I was like a zombie, he said. He lost his relationship and his job. I remember I was one day in my office and out of nowhere I just started crying. Out of nowhere. I didn't know why, said Mo. But the worst symptoms had yet to come. Maybe one or two months after that, I started feeling a muscle twitch all over my body, everywhere. My face, my thighs, everywhere in my body started twitching. Then I searched a little on the internet and I said, maybe I have no magnesium. Then I started taking magnesium, but the muscle twitching still, after several years, is there. Then the worst nightmare started. I lost my sleep, 100%. I couldn't work. I remember I had several meetings with my HR. I couldn't do anything. I was non-functional. I was like a zombie. Two years after discontinuing the drug, Mo has somewhat regained his ability to sleep, but sometimes he still can't sleep at all. Mo begs other men, don't take this horrible drug. So, mainstream hair loss drugs are ineffective and their side effects are destroying lives left and right just for financial gain. If painful surgeries and toxic drugs aren't enough to fix your balding issue, you can always get a wig. Now we're going to move on to the alternative theory of hair loss, one that I think is absolutely true you're going to see the mountain of evidence that backs this up. It is well known that hair loss can be caused by a number of factors including hormonal changes, radiation exposure, stress or trauma, chemical hair treatments and toxic medications. What do all these environmental factors have in common? They are all powerful inhibitors of oxidative metabolism within cells. By binding at sites such as the cytochrome C oxidase enzyme, 
stress, toxic drugs, environmental chemicals, and radiation switch off efficient metabolism within the mitochondria of cells. So the alternative theory that we're going to propose in this presentation and show you all the evidence that backs it up, or at least some of the evidence, Hair loss is the result of a dysfunctional metabolism in hair follicles and in the body as a whole. Research has identified a link between hair loss and cardiovascular disease, including a recent study in India that found bald men are 5.6 times more likely to suffer from a heart condition. Another study found that men with bald spots at the crown of their heads are 1.5 times more likely to contract prostate cancer than those without. On this slide, we got a photo on the right of Philip Banks from Fresh Prince. It is a snapshot from the episode where Will sneaks him a couple burgers because he wasn't allowed to eat any fast food. I think he was on some kind of diet trying to improve his health. Will brought him some burgers, and the second he took a bite of one, boom, heart attack. So that's what we've got on screen here. And interestingly, he has a bald head as well. So now we're going to look at the link between oxidative stress in the body and hair loss. Another systemic issue seen in patients with hair loss is increased oxidative stress in the entire body, which occurs as a result of the breakdown of efficient metabolism. P. Acharya and M. C. Mather from the Department of Dermatology at the College of Medical Sciences in Bharatpur, Nepal, looked at the relationship between oxidative stress in the body and hair loss. They found that patients with alopecia areata had impaired oxidative balance with elevated levels of serum malondialdehyde, nitric oxide, and total oxidant capacity, and lower levels of serum superoxidase dismutase, paraoxidase, glutathione peroxidase, and total antioxidant capacity. Levels of oxidative parameters were significantly higher in severe hair loss patients compared to mild or moderate hair loss patients. The study concluded that current evidence suggests that alopecia areata is associated with oxidative stress. Now we're going to look at the link between unsaturated fat in the diet prostaglandins, and baldness. In 2012, Garza and colleagues made a landmark discovery that prostaglandin D2 inhibited hair growth and accumulated in the scalps of balding men. Prostaglandin D2 is synthesized from the essential fatty acid arachidonic acid, which is synthesized from linoleic acid, in other words, omega-6, in the liver. All prostaglandins are synthesized from polyunsaturated fatty acids that must be supplied by the diet according to endocrine physiologist Constance R. Martin. And interestingly, animals made deficient in so-called essential fatty acids produce less prostaglandins, less estrogen, and are incredibly resistant to stress. And therefore, the gradual accumulation of polyunsaturated fatty acids in tissues of the body is central to baldness. In other words, overconsumption of essential fatty acids appears to be the primary cause of hair loss. The culprits include vegetable oils like corn oil, soy oil, nut and seed oils, avocados, and cold water fish oil. Safe, protective fats include butter, coconut oil, olive oil, beef fat, lamb fat, shea butter, and chocolate fat. Making this switch in your diet is probably the most powerful thing you can do as far as long-term remediation of hair loss and baldness. And it turns out polyunsaturated fatty acids, also known as PUFA, which is an acronym, are extremely vulnerable to oxidation, and their presence explains the increased oxidative stress that is seen in people with baldness. PUFA disrupt efficient metabolism within hair follicles and the body as a whole, causing mitochondrial damage. And therefore, the key to reversing baldness is to restore mitochondrial function. American scientists from the University of Alabama at Birmingham conducted a landmark study in 2018 that examined the effects of mitochondrial function on hair growth as well as wrinkled skin. The study demonstrated that reduced mitochondrial activity within mice resulted in wrinkles and visual hair loss with an increased number of dysfunctional hair follicles and inflammatory responses. Their research found that restoration of mitochondrial functions can reverse the skin and hair pathology. So now, the question remains, can red light therapy reverse hair loss? Red light is one of the safest and most effective ways to heal a dysfunctional metabolism and enhance mitochondrial function. Here's a quote from a 2013 study. Evidence suggests that low-level laser therapy, also known as red light therapy using lasers, acts on the mitochondria and may alter cell metabolism through photodissociation of inhibitory nitric oxide from cytochrome C oxidase, causing increased ATP production and modulation of reactive oxygen species. As it turns out, Hungarian scientist Dr. Andre Mester 
who was the first to discover the medicinal properties of red laser light in the 1960s using a ruby laser, first observed that hair and shaven mice irradiated with a low fluence laser at 694 nanometers grew faster than in non-irradiated mice. Dr. Michael Hamblin and his colleagues from Harvard University conducted a review on the use of low-level laser therapy for the treatment of hair loss in 2013 and reported, Studies have shown that red light therapy stimulated hair growth in mice subjected to chemotherapy-induced hair loss and also in alopecia areata. Controlled clinical trials demonstrated that red light therapy stimulated hair growth in both men and women. Their review concluded that low-level laser therapy for hair growth in both men and women appears to be both safe and effective. 2017 review analyzed 11 studies, including a total of 680 patients who were treated with red light therapy for hair growth. The vast majority of patients treated with red light spoke favorably of the treatment, and researchers noted significant improvements in both hair count and hair density. In the 2018 review, American researchers from the Department of Dermatology and Cutaneous Surgery at the University of Miami Miller School of Medicine conducted a review on the use of red light therapy for the treatment of androgenic alopecia and reported, 10 of 11 trials demonstrated significant improvement in androgenic alopecia in comparison to baseline or controls when treated with red light therapy. Let's take a closer look at one of the studies to find out a good dose for treatment if you're looking to treat yourself. In a 2014 U.S. and Hungarian study published in the journal Lasers in Surgery and Medicine, 655 nanometer red light and 780 nanometer near-infrared light was applied to patients once a day for 10 minutes. 24 male androgenic alopecia patients were treated and evaluated by a group of investigators. After 14 weeks of treatment, 10 minutes per day, an increase in hair density was observed and 83% of the patients reported a high level of satisfaction with the treatment. Interestingly, based on the mountain of evidence showing repeatedly the incredible efficacy of red light for restoring hair growth in animals and in humans, the Food and Drug Administration has approved red light therapy as a treatment for hair loss in both men and women. Now we're going to look at a fascinating study that directly compared the effects of mainstream hair loss drug Propecia with red light therapy. What's more effective, Propecia or red light? Amazingly, red light therapy was compared directly to the 5 alpha reductase inhibitors phenosteride and deuteroside for hair growth in 2018. The review included 22 studies and researchers concluded that red light therapy was the superior treatment. Not only did red light therapy outperform these drugs for effectiveness, but red light therapy was also found to have no side effects. Now we're going to look at some before and after photos. Lichen planopolaris is a type of scarring hair loss that results from the disease lichen planus. Lichen planus is said to be caused by autoimmunity, but according to mainstream medicine, the reasons for this type of hair loss is unknown. Of course, if you haven't already, check out our other presentation exposing mainstream medicine's mistaken theory about autoimmune disease and what it really is at endalldisease.com slash episode 19. Anyway, the very best drug treatments that mainstream medicine has come up with for lichen planopilaris have dismal success rates of only 10% and as always come with horrible potential side effects. So the question is, what happens when you apply red light therapy, a treatment with no side effects, to patients with lichen planopilaris? Well, researchers from Madrid, Spain tested the effects of red light in patients with lichen planopilaris in a 2018 study published in the journal of the American Academy of Dermatology. In the study, eight patients were treated with red light for 15 minutes a day every day for six months. If you are listening to the audio on the screen now is the before and after photos and the scientists in the study reported significantly thicker hair after three months and six months. Hair was less patchy and scalp was less red. They also reported decreased activity of the lichen planopilaris disease. Now another before and after photo of red light therapy effectively treating hair loss comes from a study consisting of 47 women aged 18 to 60 years old who were treated using red lasers and LEDs. The 2014 study was published in the journal Lasers in Surgery and Medicine. Participant scalps were treated every other day for 16 weeks using a bicycle helmet-like device and the results were analyzed. The study found significantly improved hair counts in women with androgenetic alopecia at a rate similar to that observed in males using the same parameters. So red light therapy works for men and it works for women. And you're about to see some before and after photos in the women whose hair was restored using red light therapy. So what we have on the screen here are four photos. The top two photos, left and right, 
are one patient and the bottom two are another patient. Both patients were in the treatment group and received red light therapy. And so these are pre and post photos. On the left is the pre photo. On the right is the after photo. Hair counts for subject A were 153 strands at baseline and 221 post treatment. Hair counts for subject B were 108 strands at baseline and 209 post treatment. So for patient B, the amount of strands of hair almost doubled at the end of treatment. Now we're going to look at red light therapy hair loss treatment options. If you're thinking about buying a device to treat yourself, there are a number of products for hair regrowth on the market today, some of which use lasers, some use LEDs, and some use a combination of both. The laser comb is a novel product for hair loss treatment. It emits nine beams of 655 nanometer laser light. There are also devices like the End All Disease handheld red light therapy device which can be used to treat hair loss and emits the two most efficient wavelengths of red light at 620 and 670 nanometers. There are also helmet-like devices which you wear on your head during treatment like the Eye Restore which emits a combination of lasers and LEDs during treatment. All of these devices are effective to varying degrees but their power and prices are enormously different. Below we're comparing what you get with the Hairmax laser comb the iRestore and the End All Disease handheld red light. So first, the Hairmax Ultima 12 laser comb. The power of this device, it contains 12 lasers, which are 4 milliwatts each. So the total power of the Hairmax Ultima 12 laser comb is 48 milliwatts, or 0 0.048 watts. The wavelength is 655 nanometers, and the price is 599 US dollars. Next is the iRestore Professional, which is the bicycle helmet-like device. It contains 82 lasers at 5 milliwatts, which is 410 milliwatts, or 0.41 watts, and it contains 200 LEDs as well. I looked at the brochure and everywhere on their website, and they didn't even say how much power is in each LED, but let's assume they match the lasers and are 5 milliwatts each. Then the total 200 LEDs times 5 milliwatts each would be 1 watt for a total between the lasers and LEDs of 1.41 watts. The wavelength of the iRestore Professional is 655 nanometers and the price is 1,195 US dollars. Now we compare that to the End All Disease handheld device, which is 24 watts. That is 500 times more power than the Hair Max and 17 times more power than the iris store. The end all disease handheld device uses the two most efficient wavelengths of red light which are 620 and 670 nanometers. The end all disease handheld device is only $99. So let's go back over this here. The end all disease handheld device is 500 times more powerful than the hair max comb yet six times less in price than the hair max comb. Compared to the iRestore Professional, the End All Disease handheld device is 17 times more powerful than the iRestore and 12 times less price. It's clear that the winner is the End All Disease handheld device. One other thing that really makes the handheld device better is the fact that you can treat anything with it. If you buy the iRestore Professional, you can only treat your head. And if you buy the, the Hairmax Ultima 12 laser comb, you can only treat your scalp with that as well. Way more powerful, way less price and a lot more durable and the ability to treat any part of your body with it. So let's wrap this up with a conclusion. Red light therapy is a safe and effective treatment for hair loss that is increasingly being used in place of the highly toxic and dangerous hair loss drugs offered by the pharmaceutical industry. Red light has proven to be more effective than pharmaceutical hair loss drugs while causing none of the permanent and life-changing negative side effects that these drugs cause. While the prevailing mainstream belief about hair loss is that it's caused by the testosterone metabolite DHT, the evidence has clearly shown that the primary cause of hair loss is dysfunctional metabolism in hair follicles resulting from exposure to toxic unsaturated fatty acid breakdown products like prostaglandins. Hair growth can be restored by restoring mitochondrial function in damaged hair follicles. Reducing consumption of polyunsaturated fatty acids essential for the long-term healing of damaged hair follicles and red light therapy is and will forever be one of the safest and most effective treatments for boosting cellular mitochondrial function. I want to thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our show on iTunes and don't forget to leave a review. Just go to endalldisease.com/itunes and for a limited time you can get 3 free ebooks 
and our free monthly newsletter by subscribing at endalldisease.com slash subscribe. You'll get a free ebook on chemotherapy versus cancer, another ebook on sodium bicarbonate or baking soda versus cancer, and a free red light therapy dose guide, which will give you some of the proven treatment doses and times for various diseases so you can get started and maximize your chances of success with red light therapy. As always, our show is spread mostly by word of mouth. So if you enjoyed this presentation, if you found it valuable and learned something, please share it with someone that you love. For the show notes, go to endalldisease.com slash episode 23. I'm Mark from endalldisease.com. I want to thank you again for watching, and we will see you in the next video. Goodbye and God bless.